Welcome to Standing Stone Kennel's Puppy Pickout Day. This is the Breezy Walker Litter, and we've got people from all over the country, don't we? We've got, what, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Arkansas, Missouri, I knew one of the two. Um, <laughs> Missouri, no, yes, okay. So we got people from all over the country, which is awesome that you guys can all come together on this special day to pick out puppies and look at them, watch them interact, ask questions, and definitely um, jump in and ask a question if you have it while I'm going through all of the basic things that you guys are gonna wanna know. So typically how I start this is going over just the generic information about things that I'm gonna be sending home with you guys. I know it's gonna be really hard to pay attention to that because you've got these cute puppies in front of you distracting you, but please try um, but if you do get home and you go, I was like zoned out, didn't listen to a thing you said because I had puppy on the brain, let me know because I definitely want you to have all of this information that I'm sending home with you guys. So I'm just gonna grab one of my puppy send home packets. Uh, so we've got a puppy send home kit from Yukonuba that's gonna be going home with you. They are really awesome about sending stuff out to send home with puppies. We got blankets, hats, bumpers food scoops, training treat pouches, all the cool stuff from them. Um, and then these cool shot record packets that I like to send home with all my puppies. So when we open that up, everybody's packet is gonna be the same. You're gonna have some coupons, which are awesome. And then you're gonna have kind of a generic check home um, when you bring your puppies home and what week one looks like, day one looks like. So you can read through that. It's got really good information. And then every packet has some specific stuff for each puppy. So I just grabbed Wendy's um, information because we're gonna be ending up keeping her. Uh, Jess will be keeping her for us. But so on the front of the shot records, we've got, I thought you guys were gonna nap. <laughs> so we've got name, date of birth, breed, what food they're eating. So they're eating the Yukonuba large breed puppy food, which I'm sending home a sample bag for you guys. This will be a few weeks worth of food most likely for you guys, um, but you'll get that home. Um, female, microchip number. All of the puppies have been microchipped already. Obviously, I don't know who's getting what puppy yet, so they're not registered, but I will do that for you guys once I know which puppy's going where. Usually takes me about a week to get that done, um, but They'll be registered for you. You'll get information in the mail. Hey, hey, hey. And an email as well. Um, and then coloration. I've got our information, standing stone kennels and phone numbers. And then today's date is the day that they're going home for you guys. You can fill in some more of this information, owner, telephone number, veterinary, and that sort of thing. Then on the inside, we have our shot records themselves. So at six, nine, 12, and 16 weeks is typically our vaccination schedule. Hey, mouthies. Um, and I've already done their six week vaccination where they got wormed as well on that date and weighed. So we've got weights, worms, all that stuff is in here. And then um, their next vaccination date is seven, nine, then eight, six and nine, three. So that information is in there for you. You can take it to your vet. And then on the back, we have some other important dates, the dates that they were wormed. All the puppies had three rounds of worming at four, six, and eight weeks. And then they also had an OFAI appointment and a puppy wellness check. So that's all that good information. This is also your microchip card. Um, there's extra stickers that you can put on folders or wherever you wanna keep that and a card you can keep in your wallet with their information. Then we have their puppy wellness check. This is just the generic check that our vet looks over the puppies, listens to their heart, checks their bite, eyes, umbilical hernias, things like that, checks body condition, weighs them, that sort of thing, takes temperatures. Um, and every single puppy is completely healthy and normal. It's all filled in for you guys. You can review that if you want and then signed by our veterinarian. And then the next sheet is their puppy OFAI exam where I, they actually go to, we go to Kansas City to Dr. Keel um, Ophthalmology and they actually go and do an entire OFAI exam. They dilate their eyes. A veterinary ophthalmologist looks at them and every single puppy was marked normal for everything. So no eye issues at all. Um, but that's just something that we like to do to make sure that all of the puppies are as healthy as possible before going home.
Then last but not least, this is a form that Eukanuba sits in those packets and it talks about the food again that they're eating and some notes about how much they are eating because it's very important. That's why I talk about the food multiple times, um, what they're eating, how much they're eating and that sort of thing. So they are feeding, eating the Eukanuba large breed puppy food. You're welcome to transition them onto something else when you get home, but keep in mind, um, it should be a large breed puppy food because these guys are considered a large breed. We don't want them growing too fast and having joint and ligament growth issues because sometimes if they have too high of uh, fat and protein and too many calories, um, their ligaments won't grow as fast as their bones and then you can get some structural changes. And we definitely don't wanna see that, so keep them on a large breed puppy food. We've been very happy with how Eukanuba's fed, so that's why we feed that. And then the next important part is how much are they eating, right? So they are transitioned to eating twice a day now. Once in the morning, they've all had breakfast, and they get one half of these in the morning, one half of these in the evening. This is a two cup measuring scoop. So let's say the dog chews this up, you lose it, you break it, whatever. You can use just a regular one cup measuring cup and they get one cup in the morning, one cup in the evening. That amount is gonna transition as they grow. We wanna watch for body condition, make sure that the puppies look healthy. We don't wanna see ribs, we don't wanna see hips, but we also don't want fat little chunky puppies either. That's also not super healthy for them. Um, and you'll transition the amount as they get older. So Thunder, who is about four months old right now, he's eating three quarters of this twice a day right now. So he's adjusting a little bit to stay in that healthy weight range. So now that we've got those important things, shot records, how much they're eating, that sort of thing. Also, these puppies are eating individually right now. So we've been feeding them all in a puppy pan and they're just scarfing, scarfing, scarfing. Well, we wanted to transition now to them being able to eat by themselves because people sometimes struggle when they get their puppy home. They're like, well, they're distracted. They're not paying attention to their food. Um, so we start by switching them to individual feedings as well as you guys can start when you get home, clicker training your puppies. And that's gonna start by using their meal. So you'll take their scoop of food and you will start by charging the clicker. So you'll click, feed them, click, feed them, click, feed them. They're not doing anything special. They're not doing any specific behavior. They're just learning to associate this noise with something good, which is food. These puppies are all very food motivated. So that will help with charging the clicker. Then you can start teaching them things like how to sit, how to come, how to lay down, how to kennel, all the fun things um, with your clicker. So everyone will go home with a clicker. Everyone will go home with a puppy toy for your puppy. They'll go home with a little puppy blanket that can go in the bottom of their crate. Someone was biting him. There. Their teeth are very sharp. And you see how that puppy was like, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> You're gonna be fine. <laughs> Walk it off. <laughs> Pee. Yeah. Um, so they're gonna have a little towel that they can put, a little blanket in the bottom of their crate. That'll help if they do have a potty accident. But if they start chewing it really bad and eating pieces of it, that needs to get taken out and go away because we'd hate for them to eat a piece and then end up with a blockage or something like that. The same with leaving little stuffed toys and things like that in their crate. Those eventually can get chewed up enough that they eat and swallow parts. Those ones that have fluff in them and then they could get a blockage as well, which we wouldn't want. So if you're gonna give them something to occupy their time in their crate, I would recommend an edible chew of some kind. Uh, which leads me to these wonderful things. These are Nutri-Tromp's little twists. I send everybody home with one of these. Um, it's a great thing to put in the crate while the puppy is in there. So it's something special, something that they get to chew on and work on while they're in there um, so that they can settle down and be comfortable being in there, as well as these are very healthy. They're rawhide free. They're easy to digest. Were you getting ready to poop? So don't leave it with a pad. You, I would, you could put this a little towel or a little thing like this in there and that's fine, but watch. If you start seeing them being chewed up, pull it out and be done with it. Um, 
These guys hopefully will start getting better at potty training. I mean, we've started that process. They've started crate training. They're sleeping in crates overnight. Um, they're not by themselves by any means yet. They're with litter mates, but we've started that process and they're learning to hold it for longer and longer, but they're still puppies and they still have very underdeveloped bladders at this point. Um, that one is getting ready to poop. Tornado. That? That's tornado. He's <laughs> so we're going to get, get him out to go potty outside, go poop outside. Um, so everybody will get a treat like that that they can put in their crate um, for the ride home or just when they're needing to relax during the day when they've got to be crated or overnight. We highly recommend crate training puppies. Um, it's very important for their continued development and socialization so that they don't feel like they have to be out and about all the time. That would set them up for not the best situation. As well as, I know a lot of people might still be working from home with all of the stuff with COVID. Um, and it's very tempting to just be like, well, my puppy's quiet and they're so good, I'll just leave them out all the time. That's a terrible idea. So yes, they can be out and play, monitor them, supervise them so that we're not having potty accidents and they're not getting into things that they shouldn't, but also give them plenty of time that they can spend in their crate and be okay with that as well. And crate time overnight. So those treats are something that you can give to them during that time. Then we've got um, just some little swag koozies, puppy collars, because everyone comes saying, oh my gosh, they're so much smaller than I thought they were going to be. And a lot of times people say, well, I brought this giant collar and it's gonna fit around their waist three times. So these will fit your puppies. And then everything else on our table are things like some merchandise, hats, koozies, uh, mugs, tumblers. If you guys are interested, you can purchase those as well as we have some training tools. Uh, we've got treats and chews, more of them if you're interested, as well as our easy leads, check cords, which are a good way to start with some of the basics with retrieving and recall before your puppies are collar conditioned to that point. And even when you're starting that collar conditioning process, it's not a bad idea to have them on a long lead like that. And then we've got some e-collar options. Obviously puppies are not gonna be e-collar trained yet, we usually start that process anywhere from 12 to 16 weeks, depending on the litter. This litter, I think, is probably gonna be closer to that 16 to maybe even 20 weeks. Um, but that's just based on temperament and personality. These guys are a lot more laid back than some of our other litters, which are hard charging, which also means very independent, and they start just wanting to do their own thing and run off, and they need a little bit of help for the recall. So an e-collar, as well as some puppy bumpers to start the retrieving games and processes that we like to develop naturally with these guys. So um, we are just about all relaxed now. So that's awesome. Does anybody have any specific questions? I do. Yes. Um, I wasn't involved in the training with our last mm -hmm. dog, and I never really grew up with dogs in the house. So um, when in the night, how do you know if they need to go out? Do they, is it like an infant? Do they whine or, or cry or something? Or do you need to set, like why, at this age, do we set a timer? So right now, as a litter, they're in crates. Um, I've got them in separate crate, uh -huh. separated crates, um, so it's not all of them together. But they are going to bed at about 10 o'clock at night, mm -hmm. and they're not getting let out until about 5.30 in the morning. Oh, they go the whole night without an accident? They do have accidents still once in a while. And with this many, it's like, I don't know who did it. Um, there are no poops overnight though. It's always just maybe a potty here or there. But the thing to keep in mind is, yes, they have underdeveloped bladders. They are going to let you know that they might need to go out by whining. I would not set an alarm um, to be like, oh, I better get you out because we want them to continue working on bladder development. So the only way that things grow is by a little bit of stress. Yeah. So not that we're like trying to stress our puppies out, but they need to understand that they don't get out every two hours on the dot, you know, especially overnight, they should be tired, not tanking up on water right before bed. And then hopefully we can get, you know, a half a night out of them. It wouldn't be abnormal to think these guys are gonna need to go out in the middle of the night for the first week or two. Then we wanna try and help them at one time, not, oh, I woke up at midnight, then I woke up at two, then I woke up at four, then six. No, it should be twice. Now they might be whining more than that, but they can hold it about that amount of time. Um, and sometimes you just have to hashtag let them cry it out. 
um, and say, no, you guys, you can just chill, you can just relax, um, and then monitor that. If they're having accidents more frequently, they might need a few more opportunities throughout the night. But ultimately, we want to help challenge them to get better at bladder control so that by, you know, three months, four months old, they're sleeping the whole night without any potting because they're, you know, two months old now. So in a month, I would love it if they're sleeping all night without any potty accidents. And Thunder's been doing that for since he was probably two weeks after he came home. So um, two weeks and you should be able to get through the whole night without potty accidents. And just to follow up, so when they're whining in the middle of the night, how long do you let them whine before you go get them out? Because I know so if they've been, if I put them in their crate to go to bed, it's, you know, 10 o'clock, it's bedtime, they go in their crate and they're probably going to whine for 10, 15, 20 minutes. Do not, absolutely do not let them out because they will go, huh, that worked really good. Yeah. Mom will just come and get me when I whine. Then they'll do the next night and they'll start whining and you'll be like, I need you to go to sleep. And you're like, well, I'm just going to let them cry it out. And it'll go for 15 minutes. And they're like, well, this worked last time and she's not coming. So I'm just going to whine longer and louder and then it'll be 30 minutes. So if you give in and let them out immediately when they're crying, you're going to create a problem. Now, if they're sleeping and they go to bed and they've been asleep for four hours and then they wake up, I'm watching you. Okay. Just dive into the pile of toys. Got it. Um, and four hours later, they start whining. You need something. You need to go out. You've been in your crate and you've been behaving. Then go out, then come back in after and watch them potty. Come back in and then say, okay, now it's go back to bedtime. And again, same thing. So anytime you're putting them in their crate, they need to settle down before they come back out. If they've been sleeping in and there for a few hours and they start letting you know they need something, they need something. So... Um, the, any other questions about crate training and routines to start working on for overnight stuff? And then for watering, like we, is it best to, to I know this with your video, you're very, um, like with thunder, letting them out. Yep. A little bit like outside, then you stop it after so many times. Like yeah, so puppies are notorious water buffaloes. Okay. They will tank up on water until they look like beach balls, you know, they do not need that much water. So um, I try and break the cycle and redirect their focus and go, wait, think about it. You're really not thirsty anymore. Let's go potty. So just redirect their focus after they've gotten a little bit to drink. Uh, we don't let the puppies have constant access to water when they're outside, out in the house um, because they're going to run to the bowl, lick, 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 run around. Then I'm not going to know when they drank some and when they're going to need to potty. Okay. So anytime they go outside, they get an opportunity to drink some water and then they can come back inside and then go back out. And then I try and say, okay, you didn't drink anything this time. We've got probably a little longer before we're going to need a potty break again. So watching that um, water access, it's not like we're limiting their water, but we're monitoring when they get access to water. Now, if you're super struggling with potty training and you're like, this is just not going well, it may be something that you need to monitor that water quantity a little more closely. And at that point, we can talk a little bit more about options. So um, any other questions about that sort of thing? The next thing that I want to talk about that I think is very important and often gets overlooked is nail trimming and nail maintenance. So these little guys have been getting their nails trimmed or dremeled every week since they were born. So they are in a very conditioned habit of this is, this is normal. We want that to continue. So taking these guys home and not trimming their nails for a month or two months is going to set you up for a really struggling situation when you do go to trim their nails. So you're going to want to work through that. We've got lots of videos out there on how we trim nails, how we can use trimmers as well as a Dremel. Um, and if you have questions, definitely reach out about that. But work through that with your puppies. Hold them on their backs, help them be tolerant of that sort of thing. Um, not even just getting their nails trimmed, but just holding them and looking in their mouths and checking their eyes. These are things that they are going to need to be okay with as they develop 
because we're going to have vet appointments and we're going to have our natural ability tests where the puppies are going to be handled by judges and they're going to be looking at their eyes and they're going to be looking at their teeth and they're going to check their coats. And if you've got a puppy that's freaking out and struggling or like screaming or trying to bite someone because they're not used to being handled, uh, that's not going to go over well with your vet and it's definitely not going to go over well with your judges. So um, that's something to just keep working on. Make them understand that they're not being hurt and that's something that they need to become tolerant of. So that goes hand in hand with the nail trims. Any other questions about anything? Is there any issues with water? What kind of issues? Well, I assume that like, well water here. We actually, technically it's well water, but it goes through this entire whole house, reverse osmosis, chemical injection system, changing the pH, all the things so that it's quality water. Um, so as far as like drinking water, um, yes. So transitioning puppies onto different water, I know that sounds strange, but that can definitely mess up their tummies a little bit. It's not something they're used to. They've been on the same water, you know, that we've been feeding, having them drink for eight weeks. And it can transition and give them a little bit of stress and maybe make them their tummies upset as well as have a little bit of looser stool. So using bottled water wouldn't be a bad idea for that stressful time of the transition home, as well as I'm going to be sending home everybody with one of these packets. It's um, a Fortiflora, which is a probiotic. It's to help with loose stool and stress stool and things like that because these puppies have had a busy week. Uh, they went to Kansas City for an OFAI exam on Thursday. That's three and a half hours there, three and a half hours back, and a two-hour eye appointment with the vet, you know, for all of them to get done. And then we went and did a puppy health check yesterday at our local vet. So lots of car rides, lots of traveling, um, which they're very well socialized puppies, but anything like that can be stressful. And not in a bad way, but in a good way. Like I was talking about, any small amounts of stress, that's when growth happens. So the continued socialization and the continued things that you're going to help work on with these puppies is going to slightly stress them, which is going to continue allowing them to grow, develop, socialize, and be well-rounded, good individuals to have as part of the world and society. So. Definitely keep um, in mind that water changes can upset their tummies. Uh, but once you get home and you're transitioned home, really, you're going to not want to have to do bottled water forever with your puppy. So transition them back onto whatever water you've got at home and just watch, you know, if they're getting really upset stomachs, that might just be a reason that they're not feeling as well. Now, as far as like swimming stuff goes, these puppies haven't started swimming yet. We did a little water introduction where they got to splash around in a pool, but it wasn't anything as far as swimming goes. Things to keep in mind when swimming with your puppies is they um, there is blue-green algae out there. So you wanna make sure wherever you're going to ponds, lakes, things like that, doesn't have any blue-green algae um, blooms, as well as puppies can drink the water and pick up something parasitic from the water as well. So they could get Giardia or have more loose stools. So just things to keep in mind, but that doesn't mean take your puppy, take it to your house and never let it leave because we wanna shelter them and not let them ever get sick. Well, they're going to be hunting dogs. They're going to go out and they're going to do things and they're going to get sick. But we can't coddle them and shelter them forever. Um, and they do need those opportunities to continue to socialize and to continue to develop. So um, just keep those things in mind, though, when you are having them exposed to those types of environments. And then I guess that leads me into they are eight weeks old. They've had one round of vaccinations. We recommend nine, 12, and 16 weeks as well. Talk to your vet, see what they say. But I don't consider puppies fully vaccinated until that 16 week mark, which means avoiding places like dog parks and boarding facilities and places like that, that they can come in contact with other dogs that may not have been fully vaccinated, that they could pick something up like parvo or distemper. We definitely wouldn't want that to happen with them. And they're not fully vaccinated. One round of vaccinations is not enough. Um, but once they're to that point of 16 weeks fully vaccinated, you guys should be good to go to dog parks and puppy daycares and things like that with them for continued socialization as well. Yes, and when you're traveling home, you know, try and avoid those dog park pottying areas um, because those are going to be full of dog poop and you have no idea what dogs have been through there. So definitely try and avoid those places. If you go somewhere and you see poop, go somewhere else to take your puppy to go potty. Um, that's a good rule of thumb. 
Anything else, guys? Quick question. Yes. What do y'all's thoughts on uh, insurance and like when to do it? Do you do it right away? Do you do it later on? So um, with AKC, you get a 30-day um, trial, basically, with your registration. So um, I'll register the puppies. You'll get information, and you can sign up for their 30-day trial. I will tell you, though, when we've looked into insurance, especially on our large scale with as many dogs as we own, it's not a cost-effective way of um, providing insurance for our dogs because a lot of those plans, and you need to look at them closely when you're signing up, have a lot of limitations where you know, you've got a $100 deductible, but the out-of-pocket per occurrence is $500. So you're going to get $400 coverage after your deductible, um, but it's only per occurrence. So if you go to the vet because your puppy's got diarrhea and it doesn't resolve itself and you're back at the vet for the diarrhea again and it's still not working out, that's considered one occurrence. So even though you've gone to the vet two or three times, you're on this medicine, that medicine, this dog food, trying different things, that's still considered typically one occurrence by those insurance companies. So then they're going to be like, yeah, we're still only covering so much, you know. Um, so look at it. And plus, they usually have an out-of-pocket max, you know. So like if you're looking at a major situation where your dog has to have surgery because it gouged itself on a fence pole or it has to have, you know, it broke its leg. You know, dogs do crazy things, I tell you what. Um, especially these high energy hunting dogs, they're tough on themselves, so we have to be their advocates. But those things, I mean, you're better off putting the premium that you'd be paying monthly away into your own puppy health savings account that for a rainy day when that happens. That's our opinion, but definitely do your own research, check into health insurance or puppy vet insurance um, for yourselves. And there may be a company out there um, that's a good option. But again, on our large scale with 10 dogs, it's not, it's not feasible for us. So, Especially because when our dogs get sick, we're usually going to K-State for about $10,000 a piece. So <laughs> wouldn't help us out that much. Any other questions, guys? Thank you for your patience and listening to me with my whole long spiel. It is really all important information. If you guys have more questions or forget, definitely reach out to us. Don't ever feel like you can't. Uh, we want to continue this relationship. It's not, I send this puppy home, I never hear from you again. That's the furthest thing from the truth. We have people here that have gotten puppies from us both in the past. Um, and a lot of new people as well, which is awesome. But we want to maintain this relationship and continue helping you with the training with your puppies if you have questions. Um, that We have our online dog training community on Patreon. So if you want to do some of the training yourself and you need some more guidance than our you know, free vid videos on YouTube that we already have, definitely check us out there. It's a really great resource for people that are working with their puppies themselves and prepping for things like the natural ability test. Um, as well as... We have, it's called Rolling with the Stones. It's a Facebook group. It's private for only people that have gotten dogs from us. So I would love if you guys all join that group. I'd accept your request um, to join. And then you get to post pictures of your cute little puppies so I get to see them as they're growing, as they're developing, and keep in contact. Um, the only thing that we ask, and I'll show you kind of on the computer what that page looks like, is when you post a picture, if you could just put in parentheses the litter that they're from. So this would be Breezy and Walker. Um, you can see how some of the other people on there have posted uh, because obviously not everybody's going to keep their super cool puppy names that I came up with. But if you do, then I definitely will remember which puppy from which litter. But sometimes people change their names. I know. And then that way it allows me to keep track of, oh, that was from the breezy litter. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Or, oh, that was from this litter. Oh, they're swimming already. That's awesome. You know, things like that. So um, I'll show you guys what that looks like on the computer when we go through the final checkout process. We'll go over um, their invoice and I'll see if you guys have puppy names picked out already and I'll take all that information down. I'll show you what that um, Facebook group looks like and answer any other last minute questions that you will probably come up with between now and then. So thank you guys for listening to my spiel. Let's talk about puppies and pick them out. Mm -hmm.